next speaker. A wellness conference would not be complete without a yogini. <laughs> so that's the name I'm giving her, who is also an artist, designer, and writer. Now, Greg and I met this beautiful person in Bemney last year for a little get-together, a little conference that they were having there. And she is just like shining light. And she's always somebody who walks in love, spreads love, and that's, those are the kind of people that you want to have around you. She's practiced various forms of yoga, meditation, mantra, ancient breath techniques, and energy work for the last 20 years. She teaches the art of connecting with nature and uses earth frequencies to energize, restore, and heal the body, aligning with cosmic energies, which is exactly what all we all need to hear about right now. So she came all the way from California to be with us today. Please welcome Londa Curtis. Howdy. <laughs> um, I'm Londa, and it's nice to meet all of you. Thanks for being here. As Michelle and Greg both said, it wouldn't be anything without you, so thanks so much for coming, and it's just such an honor to share this sacred space with all of you. Um, so I guess I'd like to know by a show of hands, who here has done yoga at least once? Oh wow, most of you. Um, who hasn't ever done yoga? Wow, okay, a few. That's awesome. Is there anyone that has zero interest and just completely thinks it's for the pretzel people? <laughs> anyone? <laughs> okay. Well, um, my goal today is just to kind of give you guys some tools for your toolbox. So, um, we've been talking about raising your vibration and finding tools in order to do that. So, excuse me, I'm just going to get my computer situated. Did you crash it with that high energy? What did I do? There you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. um, so, yoga is for, it's basically something that through my experience and really just from my life challenges has guided me to this path. And it's kind of like, you know, in yoga we study going into the center and going internal, which is what Greg spoke about a lot, is just we're all introverts, many of us here are introverted, um, because we were always the ones that asked the questions. And, you know, I was raised in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is very Mormon, and so it's very religious. And <laughs> are you guys from Salt Lake City? Oh, nice, welcome, yeah, so um, I know what it's like to just be raised in a very kind of closed-minded, black and white um, framework, so um, my path was yoga, so just a little background on me with all of that is that I was born and raised in Utah, and I've always been creative, so um, I'm an artist, and that's how I express myself. I, I moved to California actually to become a fashion designer. So it's something that, you know, I've always been tapped into that creative world. And yoga just always seemed to be that center piece, that tranquility that I, I always needed because I'm such a passionate person. So that can tend to be kind of emotional and chaotic sometimes, which is very much like the energies that we're being flooded with today. So I'm really being called to share this tool with all of you because, well, with the universe and the world really, because we all really need that grounding. And you know, we keep hearing grounding and that is really what brought me, it's really what I merged with my, my personal yoga practice was nature, the Gaia, you know, just the green grass under my feet. I was guided to actually take my shoes off as I'm speaking because we really just are being called to ground, uh, but also to connect with the central sun. So it's with the elements that we are harmonizing with. But most of us are cut off. Like we've been talking about implants. Most of you guys are, we're all aware of the interferences that we have every day in life. So, you know, yoga has just really brought me there. Um, an example. It's so funny how your mind goes blank up here. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But so in the fashion industry, I've lived out here for 12 years now, or out in uh, Los Angeles. And so of course, it's very urban jungle. You really have to take that time to go out into nature. There are a lot of really beautiful nature spots, so I have my little sanctuaries. One of the first things I do when I move to a new city is I look for the park, the place that has grass and the trees. And so that has been something that I find really important in my life. Um, what it does is it also harmonizes you with the source without, it's like probably the least amount of effort for all of you who are just you know balancing life, maybe some children, stuff like that. Um, I would say if you can fit in five minutes, even in your backyard, if you have grass in your backyard, it, it's so worth it. So um, my journey with healing in the fashion industry was that I started developing carpal tunnel because I was, you know, I'm gifted as an ambidextrous person. We were just talking about this earlier, being left-handed or right-handed. I was gifted with using both of my hands. So I started getting carpal tunnel in both of my hands because I was an artist working with both of my hands and just rigorously working. There was a lot of stress, a lot of negative energy around me. And I just wasn't taking the time out to take care of myself. And so I had a wake-up call, and I think that's how most of us awaken, is that little wake-up call where you're just like, oh my God, if I don't do something, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know, <laughs> so it was, a, it was real, and it's 11-11, or just, it's 11-12 now, but. <laughs> um, anyway, so I basically had to find tools to heal myself. And I knew there was that knowing. I'm like Michelle, I'm an empath and I'm a knower. So I just, our body holds all this information. Like our emotions tell us where to go. Um, I'm an intuitive foodie. <laughs> like my, my body will tell me what to eat. So I just heard my body telling me, you can heal yourself. And I was in the workers comp system. So I, I also know that I went down that path to get to get a real compassion for what people are going through that are stuck in the system. It's a very, you know, Greg was mentioning about the cancer industry and all of that. Well, there's a workers' comp system that's just as bad. It's, it's just basically funneling all the people that get, get injured at work that really, they're, it's not made for them to get better. They're basically funneled through the system and they're given like, the worst treatments that just promote depression. They're very quick to prescribe pain medicine. They were trying to prescribe me all this pain medicine and I'm like, no, I want to do this naturally. <laughs> so um, they wanted me to get surgery and all of this stuff. And again, I kept being pulled to yoga. And I started out only being able to meditate for five, five minutes was like my max. I was like so anxious and depressed and in pain that I just really couldn't silence my mind. But I knew that I needed to, so every day I would set a little alarm on my phone for five minutes, and I finally got to the five minute mark, and I was so happy because, you know, here I was just in so much pain. And um, then I started slowly being guided to do different things, like I feng shui'd my home. I don't know how many of you are familiar with dowsing, anyone? Yes, so um, then I was guided to a beautiful, Karen Kingston wrote a book called Creating Sacred Space with Feng Shui. So I doused my home, the vibration immediately lifted with that. I had a lot of um, really random health problems that were caused just for my, my home, like um, stress lines, Wi-Fi, all of that stuff. So I, I moved that around. Um, and then I was guided to Kundalini Yoga, which um, I've had, two questions already in the last couple days about kundalini and it's it's another i think very misunderstood term in the yoga yogic spiritual world but it's basically the energy that sits dormant in the bottom of your spine that when you start to meditate and move it which can be stimulated by all kinds of things everyone has kundalini awakenings in different ways so i'm not going to say there's only one way but for me, it was literally just tuning in to my chakras. We're talking about chakras a lot as well. These are just wheels of energy in your body that hold information, that hold light information. And a lot of times we get stuck and blocked in these centers. So um, the kundalini energy rises up your spine. 
and basically connects with the light. And when you're conscious and you're aware of it, you can align your chakras, clear them, and then unify them. So, you know, there's just all kinds of beautiful techniques. I could, I could talk for centuries about all the, the terms in yoga and the history and everything, but I just want to really give you guys some little tools you can put in your tool belt and, and utilize. But um, like I was saying, kundalini yoga, it's basically the practice. It's the form of yoga where you're really focusing on the breath. So you're bringing the prana into your body, which is just everything we're breathing right now. We, we all have access to it. Um, let's see, you, we're inhaling and exhaling. It's very simple. We all do it unconsciously, but when you actually consciously fill your lungs with prana, with the inhale, your body is formed to breathe on its own. So yoga is really just the art form of unifying your body, mind, and spirit with, the, with this beautiful force, which is the, literally the universe breathes us. How beautiful is that thought? <laughs> so um, a lot of the postures, I was just telling Michelle last night that um, many of the postures that all, that are kind of just across the board in all different forms of yoga are based on animals, warriors in, in you know, legendary warriors in Vedic times and everything. And, and basically what that does is when you're practicing them, when you're using your body to practice these different forms, like trees, plants, animals, it unifies you with all forms of existence. So again, yoga is something I really want to bring down to earth for you because it's something that we can all do in whatever place you're at in your life. So that's really what I specialize in, is tuning in to my own body and sharing it with others because you know, healing isn't just for you. When you go through a healing journey, I really believe that once you heal yourself, you can then share it with others so that they can find their healing in highest form as well. So let me show you guys. So of course, many of you are aware that we have seven energetic chakras in our body. We have our root, our sacral, our solar plexus, the heart, and you know, they're associated with different colors and elements. Um, third eye and crown chakra. Most, most human beings on the planet right now are really living based out of their, their three lower chakras. So your root, your sacral, and your solar plexus, which are full of blocks. So your solar plexus is yellow in the very center of your body. It's really what connects you to the higher realms, which is why it's so vital and important. But if you don't have your two below that <coughs> balanced, then it's really hard to get that connection and that alignment. So really what yoga and going into nature is doing is it's really synchronizing. I love that word synchronicity. I'm sure many of you hear it in the spiritual community. So what came to me as I was really putting together my thoughts to share with all of you was that when you're going into nature and you're practicing yoga, even if it's just on your own, in fact, I totally encourage you to do it on your own and find your own practice because it's really about going within and then synchronizing with these energies, which is the higher source, which is, you know, whatever you want to call it, God, universe, cosmic consciousness. You know, there's so many, so many versions of God, but it's all the same. So with yoga, these wheels, even, you know, the mandalas that the Buddhist monks are always, you know, meditating upon, really are all about going to the center. So we're really meditating into the center of your core. And um, so we've got the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus. And that's your power center is the solar plexus, which is yellow. And then you've got your sacral, which is orange. This is our, our uh, cosmic womb. Men have them too. It's not just us women, even though it's very, such a gift. Um, and then the root chakra is what roots you to the earth. So many people are just walking around with that kind of chaotic, you know, imbalance. So, yes, let's move on. 
So I'd like to kind of bring up an analogy. I apologize for my quick internet pictures here. <laughs> So plugging, like when you plug something in, we're kind of like little batteries, we're like little cell phones, and when we don't plug in, which is kind of what we get, you know, we're, we've got busy lives, a lot of us live in the city and we don't really have the time um, to ground. It's the same thing with the plugs. We really need to, to find that grounding and find whatever method works for you. Even in yoga, there's always going to be something that resonates with your soul, your heart, more than something else. So, again, I just, one of the things about grounding, in fact, you know what, let's just do a technique right now. I'm going to teach you guys. Yeah, it's, it seems like we need to get the energy moving in here. <laughs> so, how about everyone stand up in your chairs? <laughs> Stand up on your chair, <laughs> if you'd like, <laughs> but maybe take your shoes off because that's gross. <laughs> can you all hear me if I just go away from the mic? It, it, you can take the mic with you. Oh, oh, how nice. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of convenient. Okay, so. so just... Put your feet about hips distance apart, and really, if you'd like to take your shoes off, I really encourage that, but don't feel obligated. And just really ground those feet and those toes into the earth. Imagine that we're standing in grass right now. Intention is everything. So really dig those feet in. Just imagine that there is a cord of light, kind of like vines, just extending out from your toes all the way into the center of the crystalline heart of the earth. And just start to really focus on your breath. Close your eyes in this moment. There's nothing crazy going on around us, so you're safe, you're in a safe space. And just really start to lengthen your inhales and exhales. Really notice your breath and become present. Maybe you want to roll your shoulders open and just let them kind of slide down your, the back of your spine so you've really got like a nice open heart, nice open chest. And just kind of feel that lift, drop your tailbone. Just let yourself really start to naturally root into the ground. And just remember to breathe, inhale, exhale. And at your next inhale, we're just going to reach up to the sky, like just opening your wings. And just kind of imagine that you're embracing the universe right now. Connecting your heart center all the way up, maybe beyond, beyond our earth, all the way out into the galaxies around us. And just imagine that you're sending your love vibration out. Maybe start with this room to everybody in the room, your neighbors next to you, everyone in this conference, and then just start to extend it out into the entire hotel. And then from there beyond, just go into the entire city of Austin and extending it out into the US and then just imagine that it's circling around the world in just this beautiful diamond crystalline light frequency. And then slowly bring it back into your heart center. So in prayer pose, this is a beautiful mudra that really, when it actually, your thumb, when it presses into your chest bone, activates your heart. So anytime you're stressed out, you can always bring your hands to prayer, prayer center or prayer pose. It's also called Anjala, which is the Sanskrit term. And this just really brings you 
into your heart, say you're in your mind and you're stressed out, your coworkers are freaking out, you're in traffic, whatever it is. Even if it's just, if you have one hand free, like especially if you're driving, you can just put your hand on your heart. Maybe if you're having a conversation with somebody and it's an argument, put your hand on your heart and just feel the energy shift. So thank you everyone, we can be seated. And that's actually how we begin every yoga practice, is just tuning in. So why don't we all rub our hands together? Just like this, get some energy flowing. And actually, by rubbing your hands together, your hands are extensions of your heart. So again, we're activating our heart centers. And then just bring it back into your heart center, into Anjala Mudra. Deep inhale. And exhale. Just let it all go. Another deep inhale. Hold the breath just a moment, suspend it, let your heart lift in your chest, and powerfully exhale. One more time, deep yogic inhale. Fill the chest up all the way, and powerfully exhale. Thank you, everyone. So. The breath, it's so important. Um, so one of the things I really wanted to touch on that, that just kind of came to me You know, Michelle brought up the, the girl who could feel our vibration last night at the restaurant. And I wanted to bring her back up again because this, this violet, I was guided to wear this scarf today and it was given to me by another star seed who is a beautiful, talented musician. And Cora Flora, I'll just put her name out there. Um, but the violet flame is a tool, just like the Ho'oponopono prayer, that can really clear your energy field. So this is another amazing tool that we all have access to. Just like yoga, just like, I mean, we have all these tools and that's really what we wanna give you today is just, maybe even just a reminder because I think a lot of you already know about these tools, but it, it really is the simple things that we have access to that are gonna carry us through these crazy waves and, and the ascension stuff going on. Um, you know, a lot of times I think some of, the, some of us who can really see and, and see the pain and suffering going on in the world, it, it can be hard to process. And um, I, that's kind of why I'm thankful that I'm able to just kind of unplug from it. So I, I'm glad that I brought up the plug analogy because we really can tap into this incredible power that these gifts that the Ascended Masters have given us and our guides, our angels are always around us. So really take a moment to invoke the violet flame. It can be really easy, even I mean, like Archangel Michael, you just say, help me, help me, help me, three times. And I mean, they're right there, ready to help. And one of the things the angels are always saying are, you've gotta ask. So I, I'm guilty of this. I, I sometimes, I'm such a independent, powerful woman that a lot of times I forget oh yeah, I can ask for help, and they'll come in an instant. So that's where the instant miracles start happening, and when you find this flow, you know, when, again, the, the violet flame and seeing this little girl, I mean, she was really young, and I think that the kids are coming in already upgraded. We're going, a lot of us are going through these DNA changes, it's making us tired, and it's because literally our bodies are changing into light. Um, and so, again, yoga and meditation, invoking the violet flame, using the Ho'oponopono prayer, 10 minutes of meditation a day, just start with that. It's really going to help just move these energies. Um, another analogy I'd like to bring into your consciousness is flowing like water, like a stream. 
versus a stagnant pool. Again, that's what moving your body does for you. It's, it's literally you're bringing the light into your body and you're honoring all of the forces around you by you know, holding a pose, like holding tree pose. You are honoring the trees and, and yourself at the same time. So it's just having that reverence for and gratitude. I, I really, that's really been coming through a lot. Um, I have this beautiful friend, her name's Barbara Colgan, and she has a house full of Ascended Master paintings. And there, there's just such a vibration in there. You can feel the presence of these masters. And I feel them now. I, I feel, I've been feeling them very powerfully. They're, they're here. And they, they've always been here, but we're becoming more sensitive and attuned and aware of them. And once again, the more you keep your vibration high, the more you can actually start to hear them and feel them. You'll start to, like I get feathers. I don't know about all, all of y'all, but I get feathers everywhere. I get like in white feathers. It's not just any old feather. It's like, you know, I'm sitting at the edge of a forest and I'm talking about, you know, spiritual things and a, a white feather just floats out of the forest. And I, to me, it's like just recognizing the miracles and everything every day. Um, it's, it's the little rituals every day that really add up. And that's something, again, as I was putting my message together for you today, it really came out strongly was how much time, where are you giving your power? Like really start to take a, a stock list of where, where you're putting your energy and focus in. If, if you're working every day, and these are stuff that we, we're, these are obligations, our human obligations. Maybe you have children, stuff like that. But are you putting as much time into yourself as you are others or obligations? And really start to ask yourself, are these, uh, why am I doing this? You know, like re this is something that I've really been doing a lot of lately is just, wait, why am I doing this? <laughs> and then just start to, t you know, you really can eliminate some of these habits. Um, like I, s I just started doing yoga teacher training this month and I just really wanted to take the plunge and, and deepen my practice and it was such a confirmation of, oh wow, I, this is what I've been tuning into. This is ancient practices that have been, since the beginning of time, they don't even know the origin of yoga, but I've been tuning into it and actually channeling new postures because that's exactly what the masters did. They were just sitting on a cake or on a hilltop and they were channeling like, oh, this is actually really energizing. And so it was written down and recorded. So what I'm getting is new, new information, new yoga poses. And to me, that's really exciting. It's like, I was trying to think of a word of what to call it and, and the word Aquarian yoga came into mind or yoga for the golden age or something like that. But um, it's really exciting. We really are living in exciting times and we all have access to it. And that's really the message that I think we're all being guided to awaken to and open to is that the answers really are within. You don't need to go to a psychic. You don't need to, I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know. It's great to be psychic. I'm psychic. We're all a little bit psychic in some way. But again, it's really that that inner guru, and, and even the word guru, I was sharing with Greg and Michelle last night. Goo is dark, and ru is light. So it's bringing the darkness to light, and that's what gurus are there for. But we all have that. In fact, when you tune in, in any yoga class, um, I'm sure many of you have taken Kundalini, it's wahe guru, it's acknowledging the guru within, and, and acknowledging that, that the wisest teacher is within you. And, and everything teaches you. I mean, everything, everything. So it's about having gratitude for that. We have a guidance system, that's our heart. And so really like take a moment, how do you feel? When you are in any kind of a situation, if you really tune in to your feelings and actually allow yourself to feel it instead of feeling like ashamed, like say you're angry, say you're sad, really using that as a guidance tool to, to show you what your body is saying because your body your body is really talking to you all the time when you're when you're sick your body knows what 
how to heal it. We, we have all the healing capabilities built in, and the guidance system is just where your heart center is. So the more open your heart center is, the louder your guidance is going to be. And you're going to, again, I'm telling you, nature, <laughs> that is, that's it. You're harmonizing with who you are. Um, so you're aligning and you're syncing up with the cosmic forces and, and yourself, your highest version of yourself. You're, aligning yourself right. with you're really aligning yourself with all forms of being. And, and that's really what's so beautiful about yoga. It's something I wasn't even really thinking about until I started studying yoga. Like I said, I started taking yoga teacher training and I, I realized like, wow, I, I've been tapping into this amazing just practice. It's, and that's all it is, it's just a practice, it's a ritual. Um, we all have daily rituals like I think most of us have coffee in common, <laughs> where you just, you get up and you reach for your coffee. Um, what if you woke up in the morning and you did a sun salutation? So um, again, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I'm gonna actually pull up this sun salutation. Again, I apologize for these really low quality <laughs> pictures that I grabbed from the internet, but um, this is a, a very, very, simple, classic practice that is used in every yoga practice. Um, so you basically start, it's like, and you can see how it's in a circle. I like how this is actually formed around a mandala because that's exactly what you're doing is you're creating a mandala, a vortex, by practicing this. And I'll actually demonstrate right now since I'm in my yoga clothes. So basically you're gonna start <laughs> so you start in prayer and you reach up to the sky and it's basically using your breath to move which is very energizing so inhaling up and then exhaling forward fold and then you inhale halfway up exhale your left plank down and then inhale you're opening your chest and your heart and you're exhaling into downward dog. Inhaling back into halfway up, Ardha Udhyasana. And you exhale, inhaling back into the sky. So actually for the, the spring equinox, or for the, yes, for the equinox, um, one of our homework assignments was to do 108 of those, basically. And then there's a B version, so every 25th, you know, circle of that, we would do a B, which is you add in like this posture and then a, a warrior one posture, which is pretty strenuous, especially after you do it a few, a few uh, 50 times. <laughs> but, uh, but I can tell you it was very energizing and it, it really shifts you into that, that space of, I think they call it nirvana or samadhi. Um, and that's really where we're going. And it's, it's a vibration. And again, I wanted to touch on the joy frequency. Uh, again, this is another tool for your toolbox, is to always, is just be happy. Again, my, my friend Barbara with the Ascended Master Paintings, She's always giving me these little tidbits of advice that I'm just like, oh my God. And then you just instantly apply it and you're like, why didn't I think of that? It's so simple. Just be happy. Just find that little bit of happiness in every situation. Um, because again, it's this frequency that we're tapping into. The joy frequency, um, unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, gratitude for everything, and passionate joy. And your joy will really guide you. So again, that's why it keeps being brought up, because it's who we are, 
and it's it's tapped into your heart guidance. So when you follow it, it's like you know I, I don't know if any of you have heard of Bashar. Show of hands. That's basically his message over and over again in different ways. <laughs> it's like it, it's a full kit to get you to where, to your happiest life. Um, I I think that's what we all want, but. When you were talking about the service to self versus service to humanity, there's a point where serving yourself as far as healing yourself is important, but then when you do get to your highest joy, you realize like, I can't just keep this to myself. This is too amazing, I wanna share this with everybody. And so that's kind of how it is with yoga with me, is that you know, I'm an artist. There's there's so many other things that I came in remembering how to do. We're all masters here. If you're in this room, you're probably, you've lived many lives and mastered many, many things. So I came in just remembering a lot of my gifts. But for some reason, yoga has always been this center point in my life. It makes me very happy, centered. Um, it's it's basically who I am. If, if I don't do yoga, I start to kind of trail off and go off on the little, you know, wild toads, wild ride. <laughs> so find that, find that within yourself. You know, Picasso said, the secret to life or the, the purpose of life is to find your gift and then the meaning of life is to give it away. So it's, it's true, I really profoundly think that that's a, a beautiful message during this time is just to, if you can visualize your gift helping humanity and lighting up the planet, then it's totally what you need to be doing because we need you. Like, we need all of us. Yes. Have you noticed your gifts increasing after starting yoga? Your ability Absolutely. In fact, thank you for that question. Very good question. She said, have I noticed an increase of my gifts after doing yoga? Absolutely. In fact, you know, it's, it's hard to share my story in front of everyone, but but basically, you know, I'm an artist and I went into the fashion design world. I went on a journey to heal myself. Um, and then I, I went back to being an artist, working full time. I'm sitting at a desk eight hours a day. And I have this little, well, it's, I'd have to say right here, my heart is like, go outside, you know, like, go ground, go do your yoga. And when I started doing that, and then of course I was guided to do my yoga teacher training because I realized this is big. I, I really need to be able to share this with more and more people. I wonder when did you get these downloads? Like, was it recent? Or? It's been with me a while, but the, the trick is to listen to your intuition. I'm a very intuitive empath. Um, I think a lot of us that are intuitive have had to heal from all the stuff we've picked up on over our lifespan and like the, the negative attachments and stuff around us. But um, going back to the question of the downloads that I received doing yoga, I've always wanted to actually have a healing clothing line, and I couldn't get my head around anything. Like, I mean, again, like what you shared about it be, you being an entrepreneur, it's way easier said than done sometimes. But that's that's the human mind. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> it's the human mind that actually um, prevents you from that flow. And when you just surrender, which is what yoga does for me, it gets my brain out of the way and then things just flow. So, so literally an example of that, I was in Shavasana after a very strenuous, they call it booty yoga. <laughs> so you're sweating and you're moving your sacral chakra. There, the sacral chakra right now, that's another message I downloaded is that there's a lot of past life stuff going on in that chakra. And I think it's holding a lot of us light workers back, including myself, you know, I'm gonna raise my hand for myself and take responsibility. And when I started moving that center, I had a total emotional release. I had to leave the room, I had to go home and cry. And so it's just stuff that you really have to look at. And it's stuff that's really kind of, not something we typically like to look at because it's very emotional and painful, very deeply painful, um, but again, then I was in Shavasana at another yoga class, and I started getting visuals of stuff to put on t-shirts and you know just all these amazing ideas, and it's that, it's that divine flow. And as an artist, I can see myself doing that as well. I, I know I'm supposed to create an artistic community, a lot like what Greg said, he had the download to create this community in 5D and everything. 
I know I'm supposed to create a, a healing community for artists, showing them how to connect with nature and connect with that divine flow because it's very, it's who we are. The, the divine creativity and that source gets cut off when you're not in alignment. So yes, absolutely yoga has opened that up for me. And it's exciting because when I followed my heart to do yoga, which didn't seem very logical, I'm like, well, wait, I need to finish my art projects, you know? But in doing the yoga, just slowing down to do that, now I'm not only able to, to love my body and connect, but also do any and every project and more that comes to me, and it's divine. It's absolutely from the higher realms. And you couldn't, yeah, I can create stuff. I mean, did you guys notice there's hearts on the wall, <laughs> by the way? Did anyone notice that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say that when I first walked up and it just came back to me, but yes. D is there any other questions? Did that answer your question, by the way? Yeah, because I just recently doing that very similar. The oh, the, the sun salutation. I love that you, I love that that's happening to you because that's exactly how it came to me. I was simply guided to do it. Yeah. And I just started doing it, and I actually did it my own way. I didn't even really technically look at a picture. Yeah. And then I finally got curious because a friend of mine said, oh, you're doing sun salutations. And I'm like, oh, is that what that is? So I Googled it, of course, and I found the pictures. And I'm like, oh, I'm kind of doing it differently. And then my yoga teacher, my mentor right now, she said there's many versions. There's versions where you can salute the moon. So it's kind of like different ways you can connect with different planet bodies and everything. So it's very cosmic. I'm very excited about the downloads as well. It's really beautiful because the art of yoga, it really is an art, a creative art, and you're really tapping into that creative source. And are you creative at all? Most of us are, most of us are, and then, and then it just goes away. Even like, I was born psychic, and I, I was precognitive, and I turned it off because I'm like, what is this? So I asked my guides to turn it off, and it's, it's coming back, but that's another message I think all of us need to hear is that we've been veiled for a reason. If we were to see everything that's going on, we would literally just not even be able to be here. So um, thank you for being so strong, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really think that yoga is important, and that's why I'm that's why I'm here right now. Even though it doesn't totally make sense to me, but that's just it. We can't really try to rationalize our intuition. It's something that I've struggled with my whole life is not listening to that and. When you finally do, when you finally reach that point of like, okay, I'm gonna trust that, then all, it's like a door, it's a portal, and your whole world opens up, and you just step through, and you keep going up, and even just the other day, I was driving, it was my birthday, and I was driving over to go see Barbara, she's leaving, and she calls her house the Temple of Light, and so I'm so honored to be connected to, to all of you, and her, and everybody, and I went to go say goodbye to her. And as I was driving over there, the clouds looked incredible. There was the sun was shining through. It looked like a painting, but not. It it was three dimensional. It looked like it was coming out of me, and it just took my breath away. And it made me realize, like, you guys, we're in 5D right now. And you know, it's it was kind of like a welcoming. You know, the angels were coming out to welcome me. So it's just. Keep your vibrations high, and, and we're all there. Like, if you're in this room, you're on the path. So congratulations. <laughs> so besides yoga, breath work, and your art, what are some other things? Because you're a shining example of raising your vibration mm -hmm. talking about you at work and how people, you know, sometimes people who are really negative, they like to say, well, how come she's always so happy? Right. You know, what are the, some of the other things that you do to keep your vibration up? And mentally, mm -hmm. after all the struggles that we've had as star seeds in our lives, how were you able to let that stuff go? What is the combination? Oh, that's such a good question. So she, her question is, how have I been able to keep my vibration high 
and just keep raising that level so that I can confront any negative situation. Well, for starters, I've been in so many negative situations that I can't even count. I'm sure most of us have been. And I just think I got to a point where you, you really do have to surrender and just realize, I think, I think what you're saying, or your question, ask your question very simply, is perception. It was a perception shift. It was literally going from, why is this happening to me, to what is this message? That's really, that was the ticket. That was the, the thing that really shifted. Um, I'm already a natural optimist, as many of my friends and family know. <laughs> like, to a point where I, I'm looked upon, especially as people that don't know me so well, as why is she so happy? What's wrong with her? What is she smoking? Or, you know, like all kinds of lists of questions. Because um, I think we've all been programmed to not trust someone that's overly excited or happy, but passionate joy is really what catapults you over that little getting stuck point. Because there's always that point where, I think in anything, where you plateau a little bit, or you go back, like diets, stuff like that, like where you're, you're on a diet and you're kind of, you're doing really well, and then all of a sudden you just one day go back into your old habits. So what I really think has helped me as even just as a creative person is to visualize what I want and focus on that rather than what I don't want. And it's so easy to get caught up in appearances. And again, I want to use the word perception because sometimes things appear a certain way. And one of the quotes I got on my tea bag last week that I even shared with the gas station attendant <laughs> was, um, the difference between a flower and a weed is judgment. Isn't that powerful? I mean, and I was just like, this guy asked me how old I was. I posted it on Facebook, I'm sure you saw that. But um, this guy was like, I don't, I don't know how old your idea is saying you are, but you look like you're maybe 26. And I'm 25, so you might be, maybe, you look like you could be maybe 26. And he was just totally shocked that I looked the way I did or something. And I just, I took it as an opportunity. Like, I think a lot of people wouldn't know what to say to that or just thank you or whatever. But I knew it was an opportunity, kind of like the girl who came up to us at the restaurant and just didn't know what to do with the energy. She was just like, I knew I needed to plant a seed. So I, I actually shared with him that message and then, you know, with the, the weed and the flower and then it's judgment. Um, and then just to, to choose happiness, choose joy, it's a choice. So to raise your vibration, to answer your question, um, another thing I do is I just simply choose how to look at it in the most positive way. And, and when I say positive, I mean, this situation is here to open up more love in my life. And so I'm going to take it as an opportunity instead of an obstacle. I mean, even you can say it's an obstacle because that's really what it is. It's not looking at it like like you're not looking through reality or whatever. Because that's that's another thing I get a lot of times is you're not being realistic or you're you're too airy fairy or whatever. But it really is just choosing to look at things from that compassionate standpoint. And to me, that's what the masters teach. It's what the angels are here to tell us: is ask for help, be humble. Um, walk lightly on the earth, you know, don't get attached to material things. There, there's like so many little simple truths that have really stuck with me. But the passionate joy, find what makes you happy and brings you to that center point in any situation. So that when you're in traffic, you're literally blessing everyone around you and you're still in your peace and in your light. And, and maybe even say out loud, all is well. You could be in the craziest situation ever, all is well. I think I said that we, we had some uh, complications even just getting here to this conference. And I just kept saying, all is well. It's commanding, using your words and your vibration to command, all is well, all is well. And it is, when what you say, what you believe becomes. So that's 5D as well, and that's why we're being urged to expel um, 
anything negative that could be preventing you from being able to command your reality. Because that's really what we're here to do is create this new reality, but not just by ourselves. It's going to take, a, you know, a group, a, a legion. <laughs> do we have any other questions? I actually have an observation I would like to um, know your opinion about it. My, sure. my father will be 87 this, wow. um, this September, and he had um, some pain in his hip and in his, and in his thigh. He's a, he's a very traditional old military fighter pilot guy. Wow. Um, long story about his, his path, but I actually showed him some chair yoga and I'm saying this to him kind of, you know, I had no idea if he would. And I mean, he took to it immediately. And Because he knew he needed it. Well, the very next day he told me, you know, wow, that really took care of biggest part of my pain, you know? And I just wondered about your thoughts about, because I know people a lot of times, my own husband would say, well, I can't do yoga because I'm not flexible. I'm like, you're the perfect right. person who needs yoga. Exactly, and that's really, that was my message today, even though I kind of went off on a few little tangents. But um, definitely that yoga moves the energy through your body. Your, your energy wants to move. It, it, there's no such thing as like technically stagnant energy because it, it's always going to go somewhere. That's why a lot of times if we don't make the change, the change gets made for you. Like it's that same concept. So when you're doing yoga, um, it literally is taking that initiative, and it's like it's kind of like when you meet the universe halfway. The universe will more than meet you back halfway, and it's the same with yoga. It's like it, there's no wasted effort. So um, that's actually one of my goals is to be more consistent with yoga because I see the healing that it's so powerful, and you just tap into it even just a little bit and it can heal your, your pain very quickly. Um, one of the things I'm learning in my yoga class or my yoga teacher training is that it purifies your system so completely that you almost feel kind of sad because you, you, don't do, you don't want alcohol, you don't want to smoke, you don't want, like it just completely purifies your cells because it's on a cellular level. And that's, that's one thing I'm, I'm really, I'm, he's so lucky to have you because that's probably saving his life right now. I mean, pretend. I just, you know, some people who may be like couch bound or whatever or older, they think that yoga is not for them. And I'm just, you know, the smallest right. kinds of Even things. the smallest. So yeah. the cool thing about yoga too is like you said, you know, she's having her dad sit in a chair, which is beautiful. I lived with a 94 year old woman who did chair yoga. I, I'm not really, I'm not sure if she's still around, but she was doing yoga her whole life, and that was sort of one of her things that she would just always do. And she got to a point where she couldn't drive anymore. I think she stopped driving at 92, <laughs> which I think is incredible. But people would always ask her, what do you do? Because she's just like so vibrant. She looked 30 years younger than she was. Um, and again, I get the same thing from people like, wait, how old are you? <laughs> And so um, it's, it's literally just, it's a choice. And um, anyone can do it. There's modifications for every single posture. If you can't, like say, bend your back, eventually what's really awesome about that is that if you do it consistently every day, or at least once a week, three times a week, however much you can try to fit it in, you will notice differences and changes. Oh. Yes. I don't have a question, but I wanted to echo what Candace said because I was led to yoga over a decade ago, and um, there's a big misconception that yoga is about flexibility because I can't even touch my toes. Right. Like, yoga is very much a way to connect to your body and your breath, so it's very much a meditation. Mm -hmm. So, like, like they were saying, there's all kinds of different types of yoga for everybody, and I think that, um, right. that the, the capabilities uh, are endless. Just as the poses are endless, and um, right. even myself, uh, as somebody that can't even touch my toes, I tend to lean towards the things that I'm good at. So naturally, I, I'm not flexible, so I don't do yoga. But every time I do it, I'm connected to my body and my breath, which I think is invaluable. So and it's really honoring your body, your vessel, because that's what this is. That we are like, I think.
think you or Greg said, these are our shells. And what yoga does is it really connects you to your body, to your, I call it my temple. Um, it really is that. It, it, it's, it's something to be honored. Um, and when you're doing any kind of yoga, you're connecting with that, even if it's just through the breath. Because just breath work is yoga. That's yoga. You can say, hey, I did some yoga today. You just, you know, breathed a, a very deep, full breaths. It's just really being conscious and connecting. So thank you for bringing that up. That's, that's really important. Well, I think that um, a lot of people are afraid to be in their body. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not easy. Earth is not easy. <laughs> so it is. It's a way of befriending that that um, gap because I think we all have these gaps and I think especially women we've struggled with how we're supposed to look and be and so yoga is a way of really befriending your body and, and connecting with it saying I love you thighs. I love you arm. Like you know, you may not be bending as much as I want you to be, but I love you where you're at right now. And it's really like, that's actually a really great practice too, is to just take a moment in your day, go to the bathroom, go outside, whatever, and just tell your body you love it in different places, especially the places that hurt, it's especially those places. So it's powerful. <laughs> so is there any more questions before I wrap it up? Her name is Cora Flora, and she actually gave me that scarf, this beautiful gypsy scarf. That, that's that's kind of how I look at it. You fit like, right in in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Just a quick comment. Uh, I think a lot of people put off yoga because they think they have to do the full workout. Mm -hmm. My yoga teacher gave us some good advice. He said, just do some. Anything. Five minutes. Those are actually the best. I would say that just five minutes, I think one morning I ran around the block because I just felt guided to move my energy, and my I had the most miraculous day. And that's all, it was just a run around the block, that was it. It's not like I, I did laps or anything, I just literally was like, I know I need to move this energy. And like this beautiful woman over here said that she channeled the sun salutations um, our bodies are telling us what, what it needs, so just listen. It's just being in tune to that. So, yes? What about Tai Chi? That's the, I say that they're very related and interchangeable. Martial arts, yoga, anything that moves Qigong. the energy. Qigong. Qigong. Um, it's something, I've actually, it's funny you say that because I see that being something I'm going to incorporate. Because I'm, I'm kind of like the DJ of yoga. I like to mix all the different forms together. And I really love putting, putting together sacred playlists as well because to me, the, the sound goes right in line with all of that. So. It's really good. Absolutely. And it's, again, it's, it's like, it's achievable, it's, it's accessible, it's, it's a button that you can all tap into, and that's really the message, is that it's, it's here for all of us, and I think that the, the old paradigm of meditation being hard, yoga being hard, all of these, these forms um, of connecting to be hard is not true, and just really take a moment to, to shift that within yourself, and find what does work. It may not be the, the word yoga, even though, for me, my name is Yolanda, that's my full name. So I mean, this is my dharma. Like, it's just, I guess that's just what I'm supposed to express here in this life, but. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Keep your vibrations